I like the whole idea of uh, uh, being creative and uh, the whole concept of uh, greening and of course uh, being productive economically and uh, I finished a course in agriculture so I have what they call green thumb and it is always uh, it's always relaxful to do gardening like this and my next project is to grow mango all mangoes in the Philippines all over delicious for export so I'll be buying I've been buying mango and I tried try to I tried to sprout it also but uh, so far a little bit unsuccessful now I have five mango seeds and I'm trying to sprout it but again, it doesn't grow in a cold place like Maryland's. But it's fun to see the mango. Again, it makes you, or it reminds you of home. Uh, and the village where I, grow, I grown up, there's a river, Agni River. And at the weekends, we always enjoy going there, catching fish. Uh, getting uh, vegetables from the river bank, swimming. It was where I first learned how to swim at the river. I come from the province of Benguet, from the municipality of Kabayan. We are called the Ibalois, and we have a distinct language and a culture. Uh, in the whole of the Cordillera, it was the gold mines of our ancestor, which the Spaniards have been wanting to control. I was here in 1983. I was asked by our churches and uh, people's organization who are struggling against the Marcos dictatorship to come up to Europe to gain the friendship and solidarity of the peoples of Europe against the Marcos dictatorship. So I turned around and then I was here in Utrecht for departure back to the Philippines. And then while here, a telegram arrived saying that the, the judge issued a warrant of arrest for me. And I was advised to find all ways, all means to stay put and be safe. And I was... Uh, encouraged and inspired by our host in Netherlands, the churches, to uh, apply for asylum, which I did. Our tribe and our province would be the most, uh, shall we say, it is the most, uh, it is the province in the whole of the Cordillera, which uh, was what we call a victim of development regression, with all of the huge hydroelectric plant which displaced our people. Uh, now the mining corporation of course is coming in. And then uh, when the city of Baguio, which is the summer capital of the Philippines, was proclaimed by the Americans as the as a, as a city, the, the the ancestral lands were taken away from us. So sometimes we say that in some parts we are kind of squatters in our own land. So even our desire to claim our ancestral land is still in so much difficulties. And more and more we find that laws are being made for us to deprive the land from us. 
and by depriving uh, getting the land from us comes also the destruction of the environment and uh, lack of nature. And my people, the Igorots of the Cordillera and the Lumans of Mindanao population steadily call for autonomy while progressive elements among our community are joining the revolutionary struggle to bring about systemic change, to transform our semi-colonial and semi-feudal society into a truly democratic society. I like wearing this. There's a group here in the Netherlands uh, campaigning for land, and they've been producing uh, this, uh, this thing here. It captures more or less the demand and aspiration for people. Uh, let our ancestral land belong to us. Then we, start, we have land rights, respect it. Because by respecting land rights uh, of our people, is also respecting the environment. Because truly, it takes knowledge about technology, as about the environment, where the rice terraces are maintained to all of these years, to hundreds of years. Uh, but first, we have the land. We should have the land, and our ownership of the land should be insured. And by insuring it, it would also ensure the, uh, the safekeeping of the environment. Because the environment is a part of the land. It is necessary for our existence and for our survival. So love